Welcome and welcome again to this live video. We are now at the tea house, but outside as members of the president cabinet. Come out for a full session. After which, we are going to be speaking to some members of Paris, getting their so that is the presidential press secretary um, advising on their spot <laughs> very tiring well, no, 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 well, we have. Well, let it come down to the floor. Well, we very administer. That's um one more step. The honorable vice president. All right, that's it. Out of the one, two, three, four, five. This is how we conclude the fifth Good. cabinet meeting. That is oh, his excellency and his vice president right there. You know, said that too. So we're now going to um, some members of the cabinet.
I can assure you that the Honorable Justice Minister Ansela Otwell Nancy Square is going to be speaking. So, 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 Sir, can you excuse me? So, are we taking him first? Yes. Okay. Excuse me. Thank you. Can we move back a little, please? Just to make sure we have a very brief conversation just to get an impression of the Ministry of Justice and Transport as well as the Minister of Justice, Honorable Oswald. Yes. Good evening. Who, 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 Oh, yes, so uh, Honorable yeah. Minister, welcome. Uh, welcome to the media. I'm Sylvester Chiropley, work for the Spoon Network. Uh, we know that you will tell us how, how was the meeting, but uh, we are seeing the LACC, the GAC, uh, other report circulating that talking about the uh, auditing former government officials and other people. Can you tell us exactly uh, what's the stand of the Justice Ministry? How effective uh, with the Justice Ministry? in this process. Oh, the first thing I want to point of correction. The GSA is not auditing former government officials. Okay. The GSA is auditing government entities. Okay. Okay. Uh, my stand is to what we're doing, there's a whole stack of other reports. We are working on it, analyzing it, and see what they see. If the analyst the analysis shows that there be some criminality, we will go to the the next step. Uh, if, if it's clear and think that maybe you said anything I just come on mismanagement by artists and even the administrative you know, you involved that to and then criminal matter. So we don't analysis we don't know yet. So, 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 so some former officials are uh, you know turning this this process as wish forms. What what do you have to say about that, Honorable Minister? I think I will just quote my, my president. Mr. Minister, my name is Regan S. Levy, the report for the Liberal News Agency. The president has asked you not to work in fear. How do you feel uh, be given such an opportunity by the president today? Not to work in fear? In fear. Of course, I will not work in fear. <laughs> to do your work without uh, being, you being afraid, uh, to do it professionally and stuff like that. How I think, think if any government official is afraid, you shouldn't take the job. You shouldn't work it. In government, you don't come with government or fear. You just come to do the right thing, as your conscience and the law dictates. So it's, it's not here, but with the president assurance, and which he are always giving to his minister, I think he just emboldening us more. Honorable, last thing for my aunt, uh, you may listen to the former the former president, uh, 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 Mr. Josh Weir, you know, asking you know uh, partisans, even like bringing people that. Uh, in any attempt for any which point like he classified it, you know, uh, they, they will resist it. So, you being the justice minister of the Republic of Liberia, um, how do you see your statement? What, what will you say to the Liberian people also? Uh, the first thing I say, we have all due respect for the former head of state. He's our former president. But you just ignore the fact if there is any wish on what we're doing is not a wish on We are very analytical. And we'll go ahead yeah, according with the law and in a transparent and open manner. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Sir. Thank you Honorable Minister. Thank, Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Thank you, sir. 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 Uh, there has been an increase in the transport fare, and then, uh, decrease. yes, decrease, decrease, sorry, decrease. in the transport fare. Uh, is it in line with the petrol price? Yes, well, we decreased petroleum fare, uh, um, transportation fares around the country by 
and it's definitely in line with the um, the, the petroleum um, reduction. What we do at the Ministry of Transport is that it's a stakeholder approach we have with Commerce Ministry, the Transport Unions, Transport Ministry, along with our um, statistician and civil society as well. We take an analytical look at the prices of tires, the prices of fare parts, and also the high tax, the, the prices of petroleum product as well. Um, I mean petroleum product, we have this model where if the prices drop by 50 cents, we do we, re, we do the fares. If it goes by 50 cents, we redo the fares. Uh, not only that, you know, transportation should be at least 10% of somebody's disposable income. So we feel it's an economic um, uh, um, relief for our people and we believe they can put those resources into other areas of expenses. And how effective is that going to take place? Um, you saw my press conference yesterday, um, immediately, mm -hmm. effectively. The Ministry of Transport inspectors will be going around, as well as the Labrador National Police. And first, uh, also, we also talk, um, appealing to the public to report these cases to a wherein people are charging arbitrarily. All you have to do is take the license plate number, mm -hmm. and we have a a number um, at the Ministry of Transport that you can call and report those cases and we'll deal with them in traffic along with the Labrador National Police. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I want to know what uh, will you do to those uh, gentlemen who will refuse to have Baba what you have said? Well, the first fine is um, is 100 US dollars and the next fine is 200 US dollars. So, like I said, we are encouraging the public to get to us um, and don't fight with the police, with the taxi drivers. If he charge you a price that is not the list, is not on the list. You take his license plate, you send it to us. We're running our system, and we'll find those drivers. First of ten is hundred dollars, and the next of ten is two hundred dollars. But let me make it clear to all drivers: um, we are serious about the transportation fare because their unions uh, were uh, were involved in the crafting of those fares. It's mathematically done, and it's done in the interest of our people. To reduce the the economic stress that they have. Are there hotlines to call? Yes, there is hotline. Um, I think we released that to the press yesterday. But on top of my head, I don't know the number. But we you can go onto the Ministry of Transport okay. and we get that numbers out to you. Yes. So, so my name is Vasta Talo. I work for EOBC. So I want to know the the press uh, the transportation fare that were released by your ministry. Does it also affect uh, people in the Leeward counties? Uh, maybe like Grand Judea, because you, because of the road condition, you see the hike in the prices of transportation. So does the the transportation fare also affect other counties, well, with the exception of uh, Montserrat? The transportation fare released yesterday was the Moravian is imbalanced. We are working around the clock to restore um, the the fares that we previously done in the past for the Leeward counties. But not only that, we also do transport fares for the transportation of petroleum products around the country. We're working on both of those, and I believe we'll get the expeditions as soon out to the public. Um, I think you were in the press conference <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Those questions were asked, and we answered those questions for you. But believe me, the, the, minister, the folks at the Ministry of Transport are working really hard. They are doing all they can to make sure that we get our citizens um, not cheated by drivers, and as road conditions get improved and the prices of, of gasoline drop further, mm -hmm. Um, we we'll take actions and steps to reinforce. So how does how does this uh this fifth cabinet uh, retreat reinforce your mandate? Well, the president is clear um, to all his ministers that he wants us to do better. He wants us to do well, and we should do our job without fear or favor. And we are only working for the Liberian people, and that's all that matters. Um, I don't think there's anybody that can fail us. We have a task to do. We have a mandate to do. We are backed by the law, and within the confines of the law, we execute our functions effectively. Thank you. I'm tired. Y'all have a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that was um, so we Honorable have, Tyler, um, the Minister of Minister have the Transport. Minister of Mines and Energy, Honorable Wilmot Page. Yeah. Who's the press? Yeah, yeah. okay. Why? Right. Uh, Welcome, uh, Mr. P. Thank uh, you. With all the construction uh, issues going around, especially with China Union and other areas, uh, can you speak to that? Yeah, the, the first thing is the president has already mandated right from day one appointed him over. Even before becoming president of Liberia, he had mandated 
as a policy objective for all concessions to be reviewed. At the Ministry of Mines and Energy, we are reviewing licenses, and you know some of the effects, even as we speak. There is a joint interagency task force comprising of the Ministry of Mines and Energy, Ministry of Justice, represented by the police, the Great Immigration Service, and all of them are in the southeast right now. Recently, you saw the effect of our compliance review exercise in Mapolo County. And all of that is going on. We are negotiating and we are making sure that the sector, the mineral sector of our country is reviewed. And the energy sector is vibrant because right now you are all hydro down. But what will happen in the dry season as we speak, the, the CEO of LEC is in Ghana right now negotiating to conclude arrangements for Ghana through the Bota River Authority to in export some electricity to us through the Côte d'Ivoire, in addition to the imports that we are also getting. That's in preparation for the next dry season. So the president is aware and he has mandated us fully to work. I've always said if we don't succeed, it will not be because the political will was not there at the highest level or the support was not there. It will be because we as his lieutenants have chosen to fail. But I can assure you that we cannot fail. This government will succeed. Minister, oh, yeah. my name is Reagan. Is let me, uh, Minister, uh, the, 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 the opening section, the president did mention something about the ministers that he's getting information that some of your ministers have been going to those mining areas and for what we don't know. Uh, what is that special message are you taking back to your listeners? The president was sending a warning, a reminder to the entire cabinet. He didn't mention a specific minister or ministry, but he's saying minister some. They were visiting, but the issue here is the president is very particular about integrity. He's concerned about us doing the right thing in our different sectors that he has entrusted to us. That's what he was saying. So it's a reminder, and he does that all of the time. At cabinet meetings, cabinet retreat. Whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's interagency coordination meetings, the president is reinforcing that whenever he's speaking at different gatherings, whether it's just to turn on electricity somewhere in, in St. Paul or, or in, in Bourgeois Island, whether it's to dedicate a particular project, the president is consistently reminding us in his team and Liberians generally and the world at large that like that Liberia, this is no business as usual. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, the bottom line. No business as usual. That is the, the message the president continues to, to, to reassure everybody. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you, you sir. Welcome. Thank you all. As you all have uh, come, it's been a full day today. And the cabinet meeting, the fifth cabinet meeting, has just ended. And as you know, when we started this, there have been a number of cabinet meetings in this particular one, as I said earlier today, is to bring all of those discussions and conversations around the table. And the president has been very clear um, on where he is with the government and how he intends to hold his cabinet members accountable for those specific and key sectors. So thank you all again. We look forward to continuing these engagements and these discussions so we're able to inform the general public of the happenings of His Excellency, the Executive Mansion, and the President particularly. So thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. So folks, that, that was the Presidential Press Secretary. Right, they're closing up on the information session with members of the Cabinet. Until next time, we see you. Bye-bye.